Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to my card video for the March challenge, which is colored cardstock. I created three different cards, but I'm going to show you how to do this Bermuda Bay one. This is the Garden and Bloom set by Stampin' Up. I'm using the solid and the outline, not that uh, second step. I'm also using the two steps of the uh, small flower and the leaves. I'm going to start with my cardstock. I've got Bermuda Bay, four and a quarter by five and a half, and Bermuda Bay ink, which I love about Stampin' Up! is that you can coordinate your inks in your cardstock. There are plenty of other brands that also do this. Simon Says Stamp is one of them. Uh, so if you could just get a, an ink that matches the cardstock, you'll be all set. So I'm taking this large flower. I always start with the largest uh, one first when I'm doing a random pattern. And then I go in with the next two. So I'm only using this one leaf actually just to make it easier so I don't have to clean my stamp every time because I don't think I want these two leaves stamped in the same exact position every time. So I'm just gonna alternate between the small flower and the one leaf and I'm just gonna stamp this whole entire piece. And I'm gonna leave some of them hanging off the edge. Most dye inks dry pretty quickly, particularly Stampin' Up, but depending on how juicy your ink pad is, it might still be a little wet. And since I'm gonna be using some embossing powder, I really wanted to make sure that my ink was thoroughly dry, so I used a heat tool to heat set it. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some embossing powder on just to see if it's uh, completely dry. It looks like that side was pretty much dry. Uh, I went ahead and tested the whole entire panel because I don't want any mistakes. So I'm gonna sprinkle it on there. You can see at the top there, I had a little bit still sticking, so um, all I did was take a tissue and I just wiped off all the embossing powder off this panel, and then I heat set it again and tested it again after that off camera, and it worked just fine. So as long as you don't have any embossing powder sticking to it, you should be good. I'm gonna be doing my outlines in white embossing powder. So I'm gonna take my outline stamp and notice that my solid stamp only has one petal with an empty line in it. So the arrow is just to the right of that petal. So it's gonna be pretty easy to line this outline stamp up. So I'm gonna find the petal with the hole and then I'll ink up my stamp. And this has an arrow. The nice thing about the Stampin' Up! multi-step stamps is that they have arrows on them. So I'm gonna line up my arrow to the right of that one petal and stamp it. Now these flowers are pretty sketchy and they're really not meant to line up perfectly. So um, it's okay if it's off to the side a little bit. So what I decided to do was stamp just the big ones in the Versamark ink. Uh, and then I sprinkled that with some embossing powder. And then I heat set just the big flowers. And then I went back and uh, did the smaller flowers and then the leaves. And uh, I found that the colored cardstock did warp a little bit, not as bad actually as uh, uh, the normal Nina Solar White that I usually heat emboss. But the interesting thing is that I was able to kind of bend it back into place really easily. So that was really nice. For this small flower, it has a little kind of dip at the bottom and then the arrow is to the left of that. So I'm gonna grab my outline stamp and the arrow should be right uh, where that dip is at the bottom. So I'm gonna move my cardstock so that the dip is at the bottom and then I can ink up my flower here and then point the arrow to the left and I should hit it pretty much every single time. You could also do this with a stamp set that has just outlines and color inside with a marker, a matching marker, instead of stamping a solid stamp. With all the back and forth with the Versamark, there's bound to be spots where you're gonna get Versamark on your fingers and you accidentally touch the paper, or maybe your block hits it and had some Versamark on it. And so you're gonna get embossing powder where you don't want it, but you can easily brush it away with a paintbrush, which is what I did here. And so I did this between each step of heat embossing. So here I'm uh, finally embossing the last of those small flowers. And then I'm gonna move on to my leaves. Again, I'm just using that left leaf so I'm just being careful just to ink it up on that left side and I'm stamping all over. And then I sprinkled some embossing powder on those and then I'm gonna heat set that and I should be all done. So it does take a little bit of time to go back and forth, but I love the look of this, it's so pretty. Now you could leave it as is, I think it looks really pretty without the black, but I thought it'd be interesting to get a little bit of an extra pop in the center of the flower with some marker. I use Stampin' Up! black marker uh, and I'm trying to go around the embossing because it will stain the embossing a little bit, but a tissue will help wipe up most of it. For some reason, the camera did not record the next step, so I'm just gonna walk you through what I did. First, I cut this panel to have a 1 16th of an edge on each side. 
Then I cut this 7 8 of an inch strip because I thought that'd be wide enough to handle my sentiment. So I'm not actually going to use this white strip, I'm just using it as a guide. So I marked the top and the bottom where I wanted to, it to appear in the middle of my cardstock. And then I took my T-square, which I use all the time. It's really great for drawing straight lines or making marks on a straight line. So I lined it up on that top mark that I made and I uh, marked the, the left and the right sides. Uh, just to make it easier on my trimmer to measure it out and then I did the same thing with that bottom line then I took it off to my trimmer and removed that strip out so here I'm taking it off here so you could see then I took the top panel I adhered it to the card base and I did the same thing with the bottom panel so anyway that catches you up the next thing I'm going to do is take my shape and tape which is washi tape in strips made by we are memory keepers there's a solid black in here so I just cut some a uh, couple of strips the backing on this tape can be a little tricky to get off, but I found that it makes it a lot easier if you just tear a little bit off. Once you tear a little bit off, it's much easier to start. So what I like to do is just peel off a little bit because if you peel off the whole thing, it tends to kind of curl up and stick to itself. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit, or I'm sorry, peel off a little bit at a time. And I wish I would have done this before I adhered my Bermuda Bay panel, so it would have been easier because now I have to kind of worry about taking uh, it off with a scissor and having that uh, white card base in the way. But anyway, it wasn't that big of a deal. So once I get that adhered, I'm just gonna trim off the sides uh, with a scissor. And then I did the same thing and I'm just sort of wrapping my sentiment with an outline to highlight it. So I've got the black in the middle of the flowers. I've got the black lines around my sentiment and then the sentiment. This is Altenew's Oriental Orchid set. I've been using the sentiments from this set a lot. They're just really nice and I love the, the font of this thank you. I used my VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I got a really nice impression. So that is the card for today. I really love this tone on tone with the colored cardstock. I tried it also with crushed curry and I did it in landscape orientation. And I also did it with rose red and this time I put my sentiment diagonally. So anyway, that's it and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you participate in the challenge this month and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.